You're watching Apocalypse and the End Times here on God TV. My name's Paul McGuire, your host, and we're going to get into an absolutely mind-blowing, fascinating journey uh, that, that may appear to be somewhat like science fiction, but it's science. And my guest has documented proof of his extensive, extensive research. Um, his name is Anthony Patch. He's a researcher, an author, speaker, uh, the author of two novels, Covert Catastrophe, Diamonds in the Rough. And he has been researching in the fields of physics, cosmology, biology and computer science and theology for over 25 years. So, Anthony, it, it is really a pleasure and an honor to have you here on the program. Thank you, Paul. I don't know where to begin. Well, I do know where to begin <laughs> because, because you're, you're, his research is fascinating, absolutely fascinating. You're going to be gripped. Um, let's first talk about CERN and the Large Hadron Collider. People have heard about that, or most oh. people have. Uh, They've seen pictures of it and all kinds of speculation and theories. Yeah. Give us a quick definition. First, just from a purely scientific point of view, okay. what the purpose, what, it, what the collider is, what its, what its purpose is. Okay. Well, the scientific purpose is to take particles and accelerate them towards reaching the threshold with the speed of light and to then collide them, fracturing them into smaller particles for the purpose of trying to determine the basis for creation, trying to find the building blocks of the universe and all known life. And that's what science will tell you in the public arena. But where my research has led me is into the hidden agenda at CERN. Mm. And that's really been my calling from the Lord is to really reveal the truth behind the public agendas at CERN, which is a nuclear research facility utilizing a particle collider. Now, it's, it's, it's in a giant, uh, somewhat circular uh, shape that covers, how many miles is that whole collider? Yeah, as you travel along it, you cover 27 miles, 27 17 miles. kilometers. And tell our uh, viewers where this is located. Well, geographically on the map, it's located on the border between Switzerland and France. Mm -hmm. It's near Geneva. It's a sovereign state unto itself. What, what's a sovereign state unto that itself? That would be a self-governing body. So, they are so, much like the Vatican. So the collider, I never heard this before, the collider mm. is in its own state like the Vatican? And similar to Washington, D.C., the District of wow. Columbia. I, well, I, well, I'm going to ask you later why that is. Sure. Um, so it's based on, I guess, their theory or research or whatever that if they crack open atomic, subatomic particles, just crack them open. They are saying, at least publicly, uh, that they can find the, the secrets to the origins of the universe, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But you say that this is not like speculation. It's from your research, you're saying that behind the scenes, they have a hidden agenda that they're not admitting to the public. That's correct. Tell us what, what your research leads you to believe their hidden agenda is. Well, it's interesting because today it is no longer hidden. Oh. They are not hiding their goals. In fact, they're pronounced in a pronounced fashion announcing it. Last year, the uh, previous director of the Collider facility announced that their goal openly is to open a dimensional gateway to another dimension. You might call it a portal. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to put that in the context of our everyday reality, that seems absurd. Mm -hmm. And he also made the statement that we don't know what we will find or what may come through from the other side, but we're willing to risk it. This is mind-blowing. So we're not talking even really about your research. We're not talking about speculation. Nope. And, and I want to emphasize to our viewers, and you need to... You need, Programs like this, especially here on Apocalypse in the End Times, you need to text, email, Facebook, wh whatever it takes uh, to send the link of programs like on Apocalypse in the End Times like this to your friends because those people that are interested in these kinds of things, and that's a huge percentage of the population, all age groups, 
they want to hear what a man like Anthony Patch has discovered. And they're not going to hear about it in the news media, so you need to contact him via social media. And, you know, God TV supplies a link for you, and, and it's a no-brainer. You need to do that. That's, that's an important part of sharing your faith. And I personally think far more effective than some of the uh, old-fashioned ways. So, so, Anthony, this is, this, again, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is the published statement of the former head of CERN, and he's talking about, did, uh, did, he, did he use the word entity? What w w word did he use? No, he didn't assign a title to what right. might come through, he just right. that he didn't know what would come through. He didn't know what would come through. So right. that's kind of ominous. We're, it is. We're, we're, we're cracking open a hole in this dimension, yep. am I correct? Yep. And we don't know what would come through. Well, well just without imposing something on it, that has a ring of a certain amount of danger. I Absolutely. mean, he's not talking about radiation coming through. So to me, especially, and I'm going to ask you more in a moment, mm -hmm. especially uh, with the research I've done in, in, into their occult and mystical belief system, it, the, the inference to me, and I, but I want to get it from you, is some kind of entity. Um, so let's, let's, let's ask you that question. What, sure. From your research, tell us what you think he was implying and what has your research revealed about what's really going on? Well, they, the research has revealed that they're already in communication with the other side, with entities on the other side. Wait, stop. This, this is mind-blowing. The research has shown that they're already in communication with what on the other side? Well, in my frame of reference, and I right. think we share this, these right. would be demonic entities. And what, what, have they assigned a word to the communication to these beings or whatever or in another dimension? No, other than to say that these perhaps are our benevolent ancestors from the stars who are coming to solve all of our problems and remove all of our ills from our society. This is so powerful. This is the, what you're talking about. Uh, is a paradigm shift that's just about ready to detonate on planet Earth. That's correct. This is going to shake up people's faith who are not prepared. That's, that's another reason why you need to send this program to your friends. This is going to shake up the faith of many Christians and, and people of belief and non-belief. It's going to shake their very view of reality to the core, just like when Darwin's theory of evolution was promoted it, it just tore up people's view of reality. You know, right. oh, God didn't create us. We're, we're evolved animals. I mean, that, that just ripped up the fabric of the entire sociological, spiritual structure of the planet. The paradigm shift. Right, a paradigm shift. And so we're right. Well, has the paradigm shift begun, or where, where are we in terms of that? In the popular culture, it has begun because we're seeing the predictive programming in the mass media. In the films and... And commercials. Now, share with our viewers what the term, and I agree with you uh, about the term, it's an accurate term, but share with our viewers just briefly what the term predictive programming is and what it's meant to do. Think of it in terms of brainwashing. Right. We are predicting the behavior of humans using human behavior modeling in the computer, using a program that if we put out this stimuli, we will achieve this type of response in human beings, no matter the culture, no matter where they live. And so this is going to what we're going to talk about in a moment, is the adiabatic quantum computer, which is artificially intelligent. Predictive programming, in essence, is saying if we create this program, a television program, a movie, and we put in images that are violent, we put in images about portals, we talk about aliens being benevolent, then it becomes sort of, in their mind, a self-fulfilling prophecy that people will believe the lie, become victims of that de grand deception of predictive programming, and therefore will follow lockstep whatever it is they're being fed so that you are able to modify their behavior and make them become part of the new world order and follow the beast system. I, I absolutely agree with you. And... Um... I just want to share with our viewers uh, this science of predictive programming that you were talking about, and it is a science, 
I mean, this goes back before H.G. Wells, the great science fiction author, and uh, Aldous Huxley, Brave New World. They were employing predictive programming. And uh, the Star Trek uh, series <laughs> developed by Gene Roddenberry, as you know, was for the purpose of pr predictive programming to promote yep. a, a UN global government. Right. And now, as you just said, all these uh, science fiction superhero technological singularity uh, movies. Transhumanism, trans transformers. Right. Everything from Captain America, it is just embedded with this. In the culture. Exactly. And so young people, are they're, they're conversant in what you're saying. Yep. But more importantly, what you're saying, these movies like Divergent and mm -hmm. um, I forgot the, the, the other one, The Hunger Games. You know, those movies are embedded with subconscious subliminal messages. Absolutely. They're not designed to be, in my opinion, just entertainment. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're employing predictive programming. And let's go to the, the recent television show, Lucifer, how they portray Satan as a debonair, ladies' man, British accent. Wow. You know, they're making him, making Lucifer right. look good. Right. Making so Lucifer look good. talk about programming people right. into believing a lie. Right. It's right in our face. It's, it's right in our face. Yep. So people being programmed, and we know that the, the result of this... Uh, is already measurable. I was doing research the other day, and the fastest growing religion in America is Wicca, which, right. as you know, is paganism and witchcraft, and number two is uh, Islam. So now, this, this uh, collider mm -hmm. and um, these beings that they're in communication with, so we're talking about the, the premier scientists on planet Earth right now, who are actively engaged, according to, to their own words, communicating with something, something with a personality, uh, in their own words, in a, in a, from another dimension. And that's the purpose of the, uh, uh, the, the, the collider. I mean, people need to understand, this is not science fiction, this that's is correct. fact. That's correct. What I write about in my novels, right. I place a storyline that is embedded with science fact. Everything that I present publicly in the books, public speaking, is all drawn from their own scientific journals and white papers. And then I'm able to see what they're doing. Not just extrapolate, but see in the real time what it is they're doing. Not a future agenda, but what they're doing right now today. The imminency of what they intend to do, which is opening this gateway. And understand that the world of science in terms of particle physics also overlaps into DNA, into biology. Yes. There's a multifaceted, multi-level agenda at play, not just with CERN, but it's proof of concept feeder labs around the world that feed into CERN. So we are talking about changing humans, changing the planet. We're talking about um, not only bringing in information through a portal, but we're also talking about definitively changing our way of life. This is a threat to our existence, to the creation of mankind. A threat to our existence, a threat to the creation of mankind. So they're communicating with some kind of entity. You and I would believe that these entities are fallen angels. Right. And then your research has shown this is being distributed to feeder labs all over planet Earth and who knows what other kind of research institutes and uh, technology. Mm -hmm because they have an end game of radically restructuring man, woman, the entire planet. In, in, this is an almost impossible question, but in a, in a brief summary, give our viewers an idea of what their radical end game is. Well, my answer is radical. Say Ultimately, it. it is to kill God. In the hubris of Satan, of Lucifer, he believes that he actually has the ability to kill our God's angels and kill God. He believes he can create a new heaven on earth, that he can create a new race of beings. He hates everything that God has created, including us. And he is the mirror image of everything that God has created that is all that is good. And so if you 180 that, if you flip that over, if you make it a mirror, Think of everything that is good in the world that God has created. 
go to the opposite side, and that's what Satan's goal is, to present his form of life and his form of heaven here on earth using technology. Now, I need to under, make it clear that I don't hold any ill will against the scientists, the researchers, engineers. They are deceived into believing one of the original lies that ye shall be as gods, that ye will have immortality. That's the carrot that so, they've so, been offered. So, so the scientists and, and the technology people, uh, many of them, uh, are under the spiritual delusion or spiritual deception right. that they're evolving man into, I guess, a, a, a superhuman or a god man. Exactly. Okay. And exactly. Continue. So if they're thinking in terms of what we are doing is for the betterment of mankind, that's the compartmental aspect of their research, the compartmentalization that they work in. Outside, they are cut off from the outside of who's promoting the machine, who's funding it, to what end. So if you were to ask one of those researchers and say, are you guys trying to open a portal and let in demons, and are you trying to terraform right, right. the planet for a new race of beings, they'd what? What have you been smoking? Kind right. of response. Right, right. Because they are cut off. We have the opportunity being you know, removed from that compartment to see it from a different perspective, from a bigger perspective, and that's given to us through the Holy Spirit, through that discernment. We are able to see what is hidden. We do our research, we do our due diligence, but then we clearly see what is really going on. One of the examples, going back to your initial question, the statue of Shiva, the, the god of destruction, yeah. is right there outside the headquarters at CERN. They produced a video last year from CERN called Symmetry, Complete Satanic Rituals. Recently, just a few days ago, there was the opening of the Goddard Tunnel in Switzerland near CERN, purely demonic rituals. Oh, yes, showed... I saw that. I did, uh, Go ahead, sir. It was terrifying. Yeah, absolutely. Did that video of, of the demonic rituals yes. of opening the tunnel, and I only had a brief opportunity to look at it. I saw what was going on. Mm -hmm. It was a openly demonic. It, it was devoted to the worship of Satan. It's in our I, face. But I didn't, I, I knew that it was the Goddard Tunnel, but I didn't realize it was connected to the whole CERN thing. Well, physically, it's not connected. Right. I want to make that clear. But in the sense of the spiritual world and right. the communication I through see. ritual, okay. they are connected. Right. And in fact, in that ceremony, that demonstration, they showed the opening of the portal that CERN will achieve. And the tunnel itself represents, in physics, quantum tunneling, which is a communication utilizing an artificially intelligent computer, an adiabatic quantum computer, which runs its computations through another dimension, retrieves that information from another dimension, achieving a solution that we can use in our world. Now that is real, that's not fantasy, that comes right. right from the manufacturer. This is the machine that is employed now, just recently, now at CERN, and will be responsible for the initiation of the opening of the portal and the stability, the holding open of the portal, for the receiving of, and I'll give this definitively, it's digitized DNA, demonic DNA, in a digitized form, ones and zeros, coming through this portal, received here, reassembled, if you will, and then presented to a hybrid body. Because as you said, Lucifer desires to be God, as the Bible says, and Lucifer desires to create his own race in his own image. Exactly. And... Um, I think you would agree. At the, uh, this is very hard for many Christians to, uh, to, to grasp. It's a, it's a truth that is hard for Christians to really own. And that is, the world is exactly as the Bible says that it is. Yes, it is. And uh, there's an invisible world, Lucifer at the top, his hierarchy of demons. He compartmentalizes information on a need-to-know basis. Yep. And at the very top... Um, there are men and women who are open Luciferians. Yes, indeed. They have committed themselves. They participate in rituals to the worship of Satan because, as you said, they believe that they're going to conquer Christ. Yep. And Satan is the true, or Lucifer is the, tr is, is the true God. That's right. Now, you said that, and I said that, and the Bible says that, but for some reason, that's, there's almost a veil in the minds of many Christians. And I, and I pray, as we interview you, that the Holy Spirit would just break that veil of deception 
and, and that God's people could really see reality as it really is, instead of living in this kind of fog state, which is based on their uh, unbelief of, of God's Word. Well, let's use the collider for our purposes. Okay. Let's call that evidence. Yeah. It's physical. It's yeah. tangible. It's right there in our face. Right. If we accept the symbology they have presented, which is demonic in origin, yes, their statues, their videos, yeah. and we take that at face value as definitive evidence to yeah. the hidden agenda, right. we can say there's the machine, the most powerful machine, the largest machine ever created in recorded history of mankind. And that is definitive proof that we have a problem. This is a extension, a extinction level event this opening of the portal. If we look at the wars... Did you say extension or extinction? It, extinction, I'm okay, sorry. Extinction level, okay. If we look at the wars that are going on right now, mm -hmm. imagine if that portal was opened. The key to the bottomless pit is the Large Hadron Collider. If they were to turn that key and open that doorway and we were flooded, the wars would seem insignificant and all the other ills of the planet compared to the opening of this portal. This is why it is imperative, because it's right now today, and it's in our face, and it's tangible proof. That breaks down our own veil. Okay, so, so Anthony is, is, is telling you, uh, in a methodical, rational, logical way, that we have evidence. The visual pictures, the videotapes, the published statements of the heads, some of the heads of, of CERN, and they are saying in their videos and the visuals and the evidence that you're talking about, if you showed it yeah. in a courtroom, it would be acceptable evidence right. of openly demonic worship of Satan and uh, open admission of, of many of the agendas that you talked about. Now, since this is true, and it is true because you have evidence to back up Absolutely. what you're saying, uh, and it also, there's no conflict between what you're saying and the Bible. In fact, the Bible would, would support what you're saying. Revelation 9. Revelation 9. Um, it's time that, that, and this is why um, it's so important, you that watch Apocalypse in the End Times on God TV, that you send this to your friends, the link, that you educate them. Because when this paradigm shift occurs, what you're talking about, and when their hidden agendas, be, when, the, when the fruit of their hidden agendas, when, they, when, when these beings start moving through the portal and entering into the earth, mm -hmm. I don't think most Christians are, are ready for um, the physical manifestation and the supernatural changes that are going to occur in, in what we call our, our present reality. Our present right. reality is about ready to be violently shaken and reshaped. And if you're not prepared for that, uh, uh, biblically and in the power of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be able to be victorious. That's correct. You're, you're going to be, you were talking about this, just, you know, over, oh, you overcome with this mass delusion and stuff. But, but God knew this before the beginning of the world, and he has equipped us supernaturally uh, to deal with it, Mm -hmm. um, knowledge is power, and the truth is the most powerful thing in the world. And God wants you to know the truth, not be in some, some kind of bubble. <laughs> We're on a verge of a paradigm shift. Yep. They've cracked open a uh, portal or doorway or whatever you want to call it from another dimension. Uh, by their own admission, they are already in communication with some, something that has a personality and has ability to, to communicate. Um, and the, the information that they're receiving must be very high-level information because th they're feeding it to, to laboratories and uh, technologies all across the planet. And w what you said, which is so sobering, uh, that video on the Internet that captured the... It was an open satanic worship ceremony, I guess, in the Goddard Tunnel. Yes. And uh, I saw it, and I was like, I mean, my mouth hung open because it was so in your face, Luciferian and satanic. I would say we've probably not seen something that bold in the mainstream media. No, we haven't in our lifetime. No, no. And you know, um, 
there, there's been an escalation, and it, and it keeps getting faster and more bold and more prominent. The Illuminati symbols at the Super Bowls and these giant uh, musical performances in stadiums by music superstars and the Olympics. There are in-your-face occult messages and satanic messages and symbols, uh, which tells you there's a very powerful uh, Luciferian elite in this world, very active, and they're not hiding anymore. No, they're, they're they've, not. They, they've come out. Because they've progressed in their timeline to the point where they feel invulnerable and no longer have to hold back. In fact, they want to be more bold about it so that they can gather themselves more converts to their way. That would make pull sense. away from us. Yeah, that would make sense because here in the U.S. we have this uh, rise in uh, the, the satanic uh, uh, churches. Exactly. Um, uh, just openly recruiting, uh, evangelizing, which wouldn't have cr occurred even five or six years ago. That's correct. Now, um, <clears throat> you, you talk about a number of things. Uh, and for, uh, first question, though, I want to ask you, and uh, feel free to be as delicate as you choose or whatever, but we were talking about how the information distributed to the scientists and others is compartmentalized. Yes. So, so you talk to many of these scientists, and I've talked to some of these scientists, and they have no clue as to what you're talking about. That's correct. And it was obvious to me talking to some of them is that they only have compartmentalized information. Now, you and I would agree that, that it's kind of uh, Lucifer's organizational structure is, is pyr pyramidical. Absolutely. With Lucifer on top, and then it's on a need-to-know basis, kind of like a corporation. Sure. Where Lucifer is the CEO, <laughs> the founder, the chairman of the board. Sure. So, so um, at the highest level, and we know this from reading the, the, the documents behind the founding of the United Nations and so many other organizations. You know, the, the, these people were uh, disciples of Madame Blavatsky, mm -hmm. who openly promoted the worship of Satan. Absolutely. So who would you say, is there an organization or is it a group of secret individuals? Who would you say is running this thing, driving it on a human level, and and who is ultimately? I know they're using lower level sources to. to sure. Who's financing this? Right out of the Vatican. Right out of the Vatican. That if explain. you need to put a figurehead to that, we can call right. it the Pope, but he's a figurehead much like any president or dictator. Right. But he is the figurehead for the structure. The Vatican finances and creates the governmental controls for the entire world. It doesn't matter the culture or the government. Everybody in lockstep takes their orders from the Vatican. If you were to look at our um, legal systems, no matter the country, they all derive from the legal system that is put forth by the Vatican. Now they have their minions that are sprinkled out and infiltrated into many organizations like the, like the Illuminati, but the short answer is the Vatican. They worship Saturn, the black sun. If you look at and look for images of Saturn in the clothing, in the adornments, in the temples, you will see representations of Saturn everywhere. This is the satanic worship of their false son, their false god, Saturn. That is where they derive their energy from, from that worship of their false god, Saturn. Now that sounds absurd. Most people would never put Saturn and the Vatican together. but it's easy enough to see. It isn't that occulted. Mm -hmm. And therefore, who's running CERN, who's pushing the agenda, comes right out of the Vatican. But at the same time, uh, um, outside of the, the organizational structure of, and hierarchy of the Vatican, there are, there are many Catholics like the late Malachi Martin mm -hmm. and others, uh, who, another guy who they say committed suicide, but by hanging himself, but that was uh, de very doubtful. Right. Uh, Malachi Martin, uh, a, a Catholic, and I believe he was a, a Jesuit, yep. uh, warned uh, um, as a, a Catholic apologist, he warned of the, the incense of Satan penetrating 
the Vatican. And what he was saying, as you know, is that he was alluding, to, alluding it was his thesis, Malachi Martin, that um, Satanism had reached, had penetrated the, Va the Vatican. It reached an epoch. Right, right. So you're not saying all Catholics are... Certainly not. Right, okay. okay. We're talking about, if you will, a governmental structure. Right. A political, a theological structure. We're yeah. not attacking people. Right. But we're looking at the structure that was assembled and promulgated by Satan himself and the direct, in-your-face worship of Lucifer by that hierarchy in that structure. Okay, so... We, so, so, so um, it's interesting to me because I get emails from every, everybody and, and, and then you have one segment saying uh, it's the uh, Jews who are responsible for all the evils in the world and sure. the, uh, protocols of the learned elders of Zion and then some say it's the, the, the Vatican and there's this, this whirl of confusion. I don't want to totally get into that, but it, sure. it, it is interesting though that the Vatican uh, has had a number of spokesmen, um, and I believe uh, the, the current pope recently made a statement, uh, and tell me if you know the statement, alluding to the fact of some kind of extraterrestrial mm -hmm. alien visitation. Mm -hmm. Tell our viewers about that. Well, he's come right out. The short response is that he said that should we be visited or discover or communicate with, quote, aliens, which is a broad stroke term in itself, mm -hmm he would welcome the opportunity, and I'm paraphrasing, to baptize another form of life, aliens. Where is that in the Bible? Right. That's my challenge to him. And there's been a number, I mean, they have a, uh, as I understand it, a um, some kind of uh, Vatican ambassador, that's not probably the right word, program for ETs. Sure, and the UN. We have a UN spokesperson for the visitation by aliens that that person, I forget her name at the moment, but she is our world representative, take me to your leader right. scenario. And then we, uh, we have, a, a num and there's been prominent discussions among uh, a whole series of presidents in the last 20 years mm -hmm. where this um, agenda, uh, this scenario right. is played out, Ronald Reagan. Right, yeah, Ronald Reagan, good, yeah, Ronald Reagan would be one, and, and Clinton, and uh, Obama, and, and a lot of them. Sure. So, so Those how, are hints, those are tantalizing little, little, to the masses. Okay, little hints. Yeah. So what do you, tie that in to the uh, CERN uh, Collider, and, uh, where, and tell us where you think this agenda is going. Well, I think we've addressed it to the extent okay. of opening the portal to communicate. Let's talk about maybe okay. someone else that everyone will recognize. Sure. That's Dr. Stephen Hawking, yes. one of the okay. most renowned Great. particle physicists in the world, a mathematician. Okay. He made the statement, I'll paraphrase, but he said, we're addressing the agenda, the purpose of CERN. He said, you do not want to open this interdimensional gateway because you don't know what's going to come through. So would he have been? A, is, would you call him a critic of the of the program? I would, in the sense of their goal of disturbing the fabric of space, right. because he said that if we are able to tear the veil to go to the hadron, the the god particle, the had, the uh, the uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing the track. The god particle being a hadron, being um, a particle that they were trying to achieve the discovery of through the collision of particles. He said that... Is that particle called the Hadron? Well, that it is a particle, the, um, the God particle. I'm, I'm losing my right, train just, of thought there for a moment. Let's just suspend that for a moment. Yeah, Higgs boson. Sorry, got a lot swirling in the head. So, so the back, Higgs boson... Oh, yes, right, right. They allegedly discovered this in the latter part of 2012 and into 2013. He said that if you disturb the Higgs field, which is part of this Higgs boson scenario, you could disturb that enough that you would create vacuums, a vacuum bubble that would envelop at the speed of light, not only this planet, but in the entire universe. Now this is coming from an eminent scientist, mainstream scientist who's, who's saying an this. Who's an atheist. He's an atheist. Right. Now, that hasn't happened and hasn't played out yet since the discovery of the Higgs boson, and I apologize for the lapse, but 
what he is addressing is this rift, this opening of this portal, this interdimensional gateway, because he recognizes that there are entities on the other side that should not be in our realm, that that barrier needs to be maintained. Wait, wait. Uh, Stephen Hawking recognizes that there yes. are entities? Yes. A- and has he, did he use the word entities or a similar word? He uses unknown energies. Unknown. Unknown energies. Right. But he's referring to entities. In our parlance. Okay, in our right. parlance. So, so he's concerned about v- unwanted visitors, yep. a home invasion, if you, if you will, sure. from another dimension yep. by entities. That's correct. He's not the only one that's raised that issue. Okay. Not necessarily vacuum bubbles, but this communication and this opening. So there are enough atheists oriented scientists out there who've been suppressed, but you can find their statements on the internet. This isn't conspiracy theorist origin. These are mainstream people who are saying, we really shouldn't do this. In fact, (laughs) the director said... The director of the Hadron Collider program. Of the Large Hadron Collider, as I said earlier, said, we don't really know what's going to happen when we open this portal. But we're going to try anyway. We're going to do it anyway. I'm paraphrasing. It's much right. like when the first atomic bomb was tested at yes. Trinity. Yes. And Oppenheimer's famous statement, I've become God. I've become death, not God, but I've become death. Predating that were the concerns of the scientists at Los Alamos worried that they would ignite the atmosphere when they detonated the first bomb. So they weren't sure. Now, you can transplant that to the present time. We have the same scenario. And, and as you know, because we discussed it earlier, Dr. Robert Oppenheimer, I guess the father of the Manhattan Project, right. the, that, that decision was made at the Bohemian Grove. Yes. Heavily occultic society near yep. San Francisco. Um, the same statue of the same Hindu god, Shiva, the destroyer of worlds, was there during the Manhattan Project. Yes. And and he knew that they were going to crack open something. He's a practicing Hindu. He was a practicing practicing Hindu. Okay. And now here we fast forward to the Hadron Collider. And as you said, and I've seen the picture, and if you're a doubter, you can see the picture. It's, It's everywhere. Uh, that same Hindu god, you know, she's doing this weird dance. It, it, um, I believe it's Shiva. It is Shiva, the god of destroyer. And then the leveling of the playing field, the wiping clean of the slate. Right. And then the rebirthing. That's right. the three-step process that he, she, she's a duality. That's right. Represents, right. Right. and that speaks to the movement of transhumanism we see today. Right. But also the geometry of the statue is replicated in the machine itself in the form of the geometric configuration of the detectors that are analyzing the particles when they collide. Wow. So the geometry is there, which speaks to sacred geometry and numerology that's right. employed here right. as well. This, this deception and, 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 and what is happening with the collider, um, you talk about the golden age of Kronos. Just tell our viewers what the golden age of Kronos is. Well, this is their belief system. This is what is driving this agenda. There's this myth, if you will, that prior to the configuration of our solar system, our planetary alignments and and pathways, that Saturn, Earth, and Mars were conjoined. They were enveloped in a plasma envelope. And this is part of the electric universe. Right. It's part of the electric universe and defined... Sure. electric universe to our viewers. Well, there's a gravity model of the universe which we can assign to Einstein as a figurehead. And there's an electric model that we can assign a figurehead of Tesla to. Yes, the Nikola re- Tesla. Nikola right. Tesla, thank you. Who, by the way, in Colorado Springs was his laboratory. Oh, that's laboratory. right. We're right here. We're, we're the in lab. the home of okay. Tesla. So it's perfect that we're talking about this. Wow. He understood, Tesla, understood that the mechanisms of the universe were electromagnetic. We're talking about electricity, we're talking about magnetism, 
We're talking about ionized gas filling the void of space, ether. which is the ether that he spoke right. of. Exactly. What we would call plasma today in the laboratory. Right. That's what fills the universe. And so comprised or contained in the plasma are electric fields and lines of magnetic force. This is what holds everything in alignment in terms of the planetary orbits. But, but specifically, the golden age of Kronos was a time when Saturn, Earth, and Mars traveled together towards the solar system, and then not gravitationally, but through magnetism, electromagnetic attraction, those three planets, our own included, were drawn into close proximity of the sun. There was massive electrical discharges that took place that disrupted this plasma envelope, that disrupted this um, conjoining and alignment of the three planets. But prior to that, discharge taking place and disruption. The three came together, the other planets and the sun that we know, and there were um, human beings that observed in the heavens plasma discharges taking place and the three planets in alignment above the Earth stair-stepped up right. and connected by electrical discharges, plasma discharges called Birkeland currents. Now, this is replicated in the Bible and described as Jacob's Ladder this Birkeland current connecting electrically all of the planets, mm. including these two, Mars and Saturn, but also Venus was part of this new alignment. This is all replicated and inscribed in stone, in caves and in pyramids of diverse cultures who allegedly had no form of communication between them across the planet. But you see the exact same hieroglyphs and in, in, right. uh, inscriptions depicting and recording what they see in the atmosphere, in the heavens, the planetary alignments, and these electrical discharges. So that is the foundation for the theory that the universe is electric, electromagnetic, more specifically, as opposed to gravity. Gravity is 10 to the 39th power, weaker than electromagnetism. What you're saying is mind-blowing, fascinating, but it's... but but. You're, you're not. This is not a conspiracy theory. It's not speculation on your part. It's based on research. That's correct. And uh, I uh, um, had the um, opportunity to converse uh, uh, about some of these things mm -hmm. um, with one of the leading uh, Satanists in the world. Really? Who? Um, I want to be delicate about what I say, sure. but a very high-level scientist as well. Sure. And uh, he, he, we had kind of a, an, an intellectual discussion. It was a brilliant man. Mm -hmm. And he would agree with probably most of what you said. And he said to me, the, the problem I have with Christians is that they, that they don't discuss prehistory. But, there you go. But you just talked about prehistory. That's correct. Now, um, now, let me underscore sure. real quick. Yeah. Not my belief, their belief. And I assign it to the world of mythology. Okay. I don't find this in scripture. Okay. But we do see their practice of their worship of the black sun. Yes. You mentioned the Nazis sort of off, yeah. Yeah. offhand the, there. The Vril force. Exactly. The right. Vril society. So right. when we look at the hidden agenda, we have to look at Saturn and the worship of Saturn. Again, the Vatican, but we can put it to the science now. And they believe that with the Large Hadron Collider, they can reconnect electrically in a more profound fashion than exists electrically now with Saturn. All the planets, everything communicates electrically already in the electric model of the universe. But they want to establish a profound plasma conduit, I call it. A plasma conduit, okay. Between Earth and Saturn, because they believe they can tap into both spiritual and physical energy from right. that planet for their use here on this planet, and From it Saturn. all plays in Saturn. Right. So, yeah. so we're, 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 you have so much important information that our viewers have, and uh, we're going to do another interview with you uh, because you just have too much information that, <laughs> that, that people need to understand. Sure. You have, this, is, this is not esoteric stuff. This is, this is the new normal. Correct. You know? Um, it is. Um, anybody goes to the movies, the, the kids are saturated with all this. Yep. Stanley Kubrick, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, 
was s secretly trying to communicate this stuff about the Saturn satanic cult in his films, especially yep. 2001 A Space Odyssey. Absolutely. He, that was a reference to the planet Saturn. Yes. And these uh, black obelisks and alchemical ma magic. And, and uh, he was involved in, in uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if you can say good Freemasons, bad Freemasons, but he was obviously involved in uh, some kind of occultic belief system. Yes. But he was very much opposed to this Saturn death cult, as Correct. he called it. And, and he tried to communicate it through symbols and language in, the, in his movies. Yes, he did. I, I, I've done a lot of research in similar areas to you, and I want to pick this up on the next program. Um, I don't know what your feeling on it is, but my, I am convinced that the Tower of Babel was an astrological table where they observed the host of heaven looking for the stuff that you're talking about. Yep. Uh, but I'm also convinced that the Tower of Babel was an interdimensional stargate or portal which allowed for the entrance of interdimensional beings. Totally agree with you. And so when I read your research, uh, um, preparing for the program uh, a number of weeks ago, I was like, not delighted that this was happening, but I was, it was like... It was a confirmation. Yes, it's like, oh, here's a man who's done research in this area and, and, and he's coming to this conclusion so, I mean, this may sound like uh, science fiction to you, but, but it's not science fiction. We, you know, it would have sounded sci like science fiction to have a cell phone and an automobile <laughs> and a jet uh, 200 years ago. Sure. But the world changed. It's now normal. Um, w w the world is changing right now. And, and as Anthony said, we're, we're, we are going through the most radical change in the history of civilization and in your lifetime should the lord tarry yep. we will be in this world that you're talking about and we will be dealing with these realities so you need to be equipped and if you're a skeptic great do your homework please uh, do send the uh, uh the show <laughs> apocalypse and the end times to your friends because intelligent people people with open minds they want to know they want something of substance and uh, that's a great uh, method of evangelism. So I w again, I want to thank you, Anthony, for a mind-blowing interview. And we're going to be back with Anthony Patch in the next Apocalypse and the End Times. I'm Paul McGuire. God bless you. And remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind.